Hey, Motor Man here. And today we're gonna to talk about link brakes. Do they help you? Do they hurt you? Some people call them integrated brakes, but I get so many questions about this, it's worth to do a video. So we're gonna go for a ride and I'm gonna tell you all about how they work, why they work, and why it shouldn't bother you at all. But before I go, take a look at this special. You're gonna get the best combo special. That's the Ride Like a Pro book with the black and white photos, the practice guide. You're gonna get the Ride Like a Pro Experience DVD, the Ride Like a Pro on the Tail of the Dragon, that's two DVDs there. Surviving the Mean Streets, Shortcuts to Riding Like a Pro. I'm running out of breath here. You're also going to get the Ride Like a Pro patch, a reflective sticker, and we're going to throw in a Ride Like a Pro hat just like the one I'm wearing. This special is going to be on the website, so there's no need to call RideLikeAPro.com. Get the best combo special, and it's $89.80. Let's go for a ride now. Right, so linked brakes it's uh, some people are very confused by this what it means is if you press on the rear brake just the rear brake it's gonna give you a little bit of front brake pressure as well if you push on the front brake it's gonna give you a little bit of rear brake now if you press really hard on the rear brake it'll give you a little bit more front brake but still nothing like if you actually applied the front brake. This has been around for years. I, I'm not sure if it was Honda or BMW who initially started linking the brakes on their motorcycles. And the reason they did it was prior to a lot of motorcycles having ABS, people who were used to driving their car, when they needed to stop quickly, they would stomp on the rear brake. Well, since the rear brake has very little stopping force they would tend to run into the thing that they were trying to avoid and even more so they would lock up the rear brake the tire would start to skid and they'd slide onto the ground and smash right into the thing that they were trying to avoid so they said to avoid this or to help these people who didn't know what the front brake was for and the rear brake and had no clue will link the brakes so if they just stomp on the rear brake they're gonna get some front brake now this Harley Davidson has linked brakes they've had it for well, at least five years now and people want to know well how does it affect low speed handling because they know at low speeds if you press the front brake with the handlebars turned you're going down hard and fast so these people believe that since the bike has linked brakes, you press on the rear brake as I tell you to do in almost all of my videos, it's going to make the, the front brake stop the motorcycle and you'll fall over. That's not the case. In the intro to this video, I was using this motorcycle, 2022 FLHTP. And of course, you can see that I'm doing figure eights and 18 by 36. I'm using a little bit of pressure on the rear brake. It's not affecting the front brake at all. It's only when you press really hard on that rear brake that you're going to affect any amount of front brake. And you do want to avoid that at low speeds, but if you're pressing so hard on the rear brake that the, the, it's affecting the front brake and it's tending to pull the motorcycle down, you probably just pressing too hard on the rear brake because you press really hard on the rear brake, it'll stop the wheel from turning and you're going to fall over because you got to have some forward momentum to keep the bike up on two wheels. As I've said many times, below five miles per hour, there's more force pulling you to the ground than force pulling you forward. So if you stay above five miles an hour, and most of the exercises you see in the parking lot that I'm doing and you see in my class videos, speed is about eight to 12 miles per hour if you're doing it right. If you're going two or three miles an hour and you're using either brake, chances are you're gonna drop your motorcycle. So don't let this link brake thing confuse you. For low speed handling, the rear brake is still the way to go. Now you should also know that the front brake, even if you've got ABS, is 85 to 90% of your stopping force. 
So you're going to stop using just the front brake two to three times quicker than you would just using the rear brake. But the best practice, of course, is to use both brakes. And with ABS, while well, you should be able to threshold brake so you get to, to stop quickly without the ABS even applying, that takes a lot of practice. And in an emergency situation, you might not even think about that. So fine, with ABS, go ahead and clamp down on those brakes and the computer will do the rest. It will stop you in the shortest amount of time without locking up the wheels. And I also want to say, you need to practice braking. You want to use both brakes just about every time you come to a stop so that it becomes a habit. Now last week I talked about trail braking. That's where you come into a turn with some front brake on. And you could come into the same turn with a little rear brake on, but the point of the trail braking going into the corner with a little front brake on is it allows the front end to dip down and gives you much more traction. That front tire can take a tremendous load without sliding out. What it can't take is snatching or grabbing the front brake. That's when you have problems. So practice using that front brake nice and easy. You don't need 100% of braking force. You just need a slight amount to slow you down and adjust your speed in a corner. If you're coming around a blind corner, suddenly something appears, whether it be gravel or a vehicle crossing the double yellow line. Since your finger is already on that front brake, you just apply a little bit more pressure and that will tighten up your line. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something.